Yeah, I guess there is one more increment. It's kind of like a postscript about how to use this information now. The first thing is, is that you're more important than you, than you think. Because what makes you important is the doctrine God puts in you. So you have to sort of reorient to the self. You know, we're always into, and we're taught by society to be into, who am I, what am I? And society really encourages you to be self-centered. Okay, well, in this sense, the Bible does too, because you have to recognize God's putting the, if you want him, and you're le learning and living on Bible, presumably if you're listening to these audios, you are. If you're doing that, you have to understand that that comes at a price. The price is that you become important. Wherever God puts his word, that makes you important. That's why the Jews are important. God put his word there. That was Paul, what Paul was explaining in Romans 9. And basically, Romans 9 through 11, the purpose of that was to um, chide the anti-Semitic Roman believers he was writing to to stop being anti-Semitic. Because he's saying, look, you know, this is what made the Jews important. That was what Romans 9 was explaining. And they rejected the word. But the word was put in them. So if they're made important because they get the word and they get to be the bloodline of Messiah in mass, then how much more punishment do you get for rejecting it? And of course, that's Leviticus 26, and Deuteronomy 28, and we see it in the news every day. The Jews are, are, are constantly hounded from pillar to post. That's why the state of Israel exists. Because they've been pogromized everywhere they go. Which is exactly what Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28 says will happen. And then they come back to Israel and all, they're surrounded by their enemies. Yeah, that's Leviticus 26, Deuteronomy 28. You're the Jews. I gave you my word. You're important for the rest of history because I did that to you. That's what Moses was explaining to them in Deuteronomy chapters 1 through 6, especially chapter 6, and Deuteronomy 30. Hi, the word is in your mouth. Believe it already. Which Paul reminds the you know, the the readers of Romans in Romans 10. He said, don't be hard like the, like the Jews were. You got the word. It's in your mouth. Now put it in your head. Believe it. Because it's only when you believe it that it's efficacious. Not because of your believing, but because God says he'll make it efficacious if you believe it. Okay, well, but then that makes you important. Being important, you know, to whom much is given, much is expected. You've heard that. Yeah, well, much more is given to us than was given to the Jews. Because he's risen now. What was given to them was based on him coming. What's given to us is based on him succeeding. So it's bigger now. He's bigger now. The, the whole spiritual life is upgraded. That's what, you know, James was talking about in James 2, and that's what the book of Hebrews is entirely about. Attic word is kryton. It means better things, and it's translated as better things, but it's it should be like in capital letters. And it's attic. It's an attic term, which means it's Greek drama. So it's like much more dramatically. The word better things in English sounds kind of drab and boring. Okay, but it, it's like the very best. If you shouted it, that would have more of the punch that Crichton has in Greek, which is in um, Hebrews eleven thirty nine through 40, and it's the whole reason why the rapture precedes the return to the time of Israel, because she's still got seven years left on her clock. And I've covered that in videos. I've shown it in the verses so many times now. And the whole meter of the Bible is based on this. And it starts in Genesis 1 with, with Moses laying out the 1050. 
And I've already done the videos on that in the Vimeo channels. You can go look that up. Brain Out channels in Vimeo. Because I, I did I did the, the, the major thing. And, you know, if you want the whole syllabus, it's in Luke Dateline Meters. Dot PDF. Okay, but the point is, is that here you are now. What do you do with this now? First things first. God made you important. You're getting his word in your head. No matter what you're worth on any other level, you're, you're worth more than all the world because his word it is, it is in your head. That's a really hard thing to accept. Because we don't value his word the way he does. But you better bet that you are because the demon boys know this and the demon boys think you're more important so they're going to be after you. Hello. Now, you know, anybody who's been Christian for any decent period of time and really is learning and living on Bible knows exactly what I'm talking about. They're not exactly quiet. And they're not exactly hidden. You know, they, they love to burlesque you and they love to, how do you want to call it? Make sure you know they're there because they want to attract your attention to them. And they got all kinds of little tricks that they use. And the biggest thing you can do once you become aware is to not be shocked. You will be. It's kind of inevitable. You're going to be shocked. You're going to, you know, like disbelieve it. You're going to tell yourself you're going crazy. You're going to wonder this and wonder that. And you're going to all get bollocked up over the question of the fact that you've had contact with the demon boys. Whether they use a human to do it, or they use some kind of electronic device to do it, or they got all kinds of ways that they display themselves. And you're going to have to learn to say, oh, to hell with you. I don't care. I already know God's real, so of course you're real. You have to sort of learn to take it in your stride. But the thing to really know about this is they think you're important. God thinks you're important because he puts his word in your head. They think you're important because God does. The world will not necessarily think you're important. Maybe you really are in the eyes of the world. You could be rich. You could be famous. You know, you could be popular. Those things all people drool over. And maybe you don't want those things now. Well, but God has a use for them. Don't worry about it. God has a use for whatever you have. And he has a use for whatever you lack. But when you have Bible doctrine, that's true riches. And that puts you on the demonic radar. So God knows who you are and he values you more than all the stuff on this planet. Because of what he did to you. So now you have to learn to value yourself as God does. And of course the demon boys value you too. But, th th you know, they express their admiration by trying to trip you up. It's kind of like a boy who likes a girl in first grade and he dips her pigtails in the inkwell demons really are attracted to believers with bible doctrine they really are and they admire them but they express their admiration by trying to wreck your life because they don't really have a capacity to do anything with their own admiration anymore you know, they've been like that for thousands of years and they're real immature now. Real immature. Very powerful and very immature. Like you're smarter than you, but compared to what they should be, they're very immature. And they don't know how to handle it when they like something. Immature people can't, can't deal with liking or loving. When they're attracted and they like or they love, they do things that are, are really pretty harmful to the object of their love. They just they just need to be that way. 
It's like when a boy likes you and you're in fourth grade and he likes you, he has to say all kinds of bad things about you. Because the truth is, he likes you. And everybody knows that. He's trying to hide it from himself. It's that kind of puerility. And sooner or later, they're going to like rope in some humans to do it for him. You'll know, because God will cause you to know. And you got to be able to turn it off and say, oh, the hell with it. This is, goes with the territory of being important in God's eyes. And there will be some humans, with or without demon help, who are also just totally attracted to you. And it is because you got the doctrine, but they don't necessarily know that. So you'll have your own groupies, and you'll have people who just can't stand you, and you hardly know them. And they'll follow you all around. That'll happen too. And then th th there's all kinds of other weird stuff that'll happen. People wanting to hire you for no good reason. People wanting to fire you for no good reason. You, you're, you're this like magnet. And it's, it's the same kind of problem as fame. The same kind of problem as having money. The same kind of problem as being popular. It's, it, it just goes with the territory. Now the other thing you need to know, and this is just as important, there will always be cretins. Cretin is actually a Bible word. It's Cretan in the Bible. I did a video on it. Hopefully I'll remember and put it in the video description. But the point is that there will always be the bottom feeders. There will always be people at the bottom. Even in the eternal state, that's where they're going to stay. That's the life they chose. That's the thought pattern they developed. That's the thought pattern they kept. They could have gone in another direction. And when they're dead, they'll wish they had gone in another direction. But they didn't. And so now the task for them throughout eternity is to keep on a little bit, little bit, little bit at a time. Kind of grow out of being cretins. And it's going to take thousands upon thousands of years for all I know. They will be boasting in eternal state. They're going to be boasting about what jerks they were. And they'll be very happy to do so. That's one of the neat things about heaven. Is whatever you did stupid on this earth, there will come times when you're going to have to testify about that in order to teach something about him. You're like a walking advertisement of some aspect of his character that you turn down and this is what results and you're going to boast in your weakness like Paul boasted when he was down here of his own weakness. We're all going to have like testimonies about that. We're all going to have something to boast about about what a jerk we were. But the ones at the bottom, they're jerks all the time. And that's going to end up being a happiness to them. Because they're going to boast about what jerks they were and how God saved them anyhow. And it'll be interesting to hear. But at the same time, you're very seldom going to be around them if you're the king. Because they're way at the bottom of society, okay? Whatever are the drudge jobs in the eternal state, however it's c constructed, because we're all light years higher than we are now. So I have trouble imagining what's the spiritual equivalent in the eternal state of like carrying water or washing the dishes. Do we even have dishes in the eternal state? I'm, I'm beginning to think, yeah. It's, it, but I'm not sure. But it, there's going to be some drudge job like that. They'll have them. 
Okay. They'll be the beasts of burden or whatever is the equivalent of that. If we, Unless we have animals to, I don't know. But they'll be at the very low end of society. The angels have a similar structure already. So the cretins that you see around you today will be the cretins of tomorrow. And that's a real important thing to remember. I mean, maybe the importance for you is different than it is for me. For me, I have two things going on in my head at all times. One is I'm constantly upset at the sloven character of thought in people. How low their thoughts are. Okay? And I'm constantly heartbroken by it, too. I desperately want to do something about that. And the antidote that he's using for me to remember, and I'm not doing it well yet, but it's just starting, is the way that person thinks can be changed but won't change because they don't want it to change. And they're going to be stuck with it forever. So that makes my upset die. Because I wouldn't want my worst enemy to be stuck with bad thinking. It's, it's just so sickening. Because right now they're not aware of how disgusting it is. But they will be when they're dead. And that's the point he keeps making. They are sticking themselves with this kind of thinking. They're, when they're dead... They're going to be stuck with that thought pattern and know that it's bad and be continually grateful that they're saved and be continually boasting about how God saved them and his mercy and whatever else they're learning about him. They'll be like happy children. But they'll be children. Maturation is going to be really slow. Because when you're light years bigger than you were down here, then the level of maturation needed to fit the higher size is going to take a lot longer. And I... It's enough to make your heart break. That's the second motive. My heart's broken because of these people. Now, David wrote a psalm on that. Psalm 37 says, Don't feel bad about the wicked. Yeah. Because they're stuck with it. They're digging their own hole. And they're not going to listen to you try and tell them that. I've had to tell a number of people that. I've had to tell a number of people, Oh, you're under divine discipline. When you remember, use 1 John 1 9. Because that's their lifesaver. They need to know. But they just laugh at that. They just scoff. They think that I'm trying to pronounce judgment on them. I'm not. I'm observing a fact. And the same would be true of me if I was acting like them. And occasionally I am. It's just observation of a fact. But they don't know that. And some of them will never learn. And some of them, when they get snotty like that the next time, God will hit them and he'll hopefully cause them to remember 1 John 1 9. Because I pray for them to do that. That's something you can do. I mean, this is really important to understand. You're important and they are not. You're important and they are cretins. It's a fact, it's not a judgment. It's not something that that really you're going to want to like celebrate. It's sort of a relief and a warning. That's what Paul was talking about in Romans 9 through 11. You're replacing the Jews. He's he's playing Moses to the to the Romans there. Cuz Moses was saying, "Hi, you're going to replace the people that are in the land. Don't get all fat-headed." That's what he said in Deuteronomy 6 and Deuteronomy 30. So in Romans 10, Paul is playing the same role. Only he's talking to the Romans. He's doing it parallel. And he's saying, you know, you're replacing the Jews. But don't get all fat-headed about that. 
Because God can cut you out just as quickly as he cut them out. That's what he says in Romans 11. And then in Romans 12, he tells you what he's talking about. Okay. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by means of learning and living on Bible. Okay. And I did the webpage on that, Romans uh, 1213.htm. 1213. I'll put the link in the video description. Anyway, the point is that you learn and live on Bible because God chose you. You learn and live on Bible because that's a spiritual life. You learn and live on Bible because that's your inheritance. Because that's what Christ did, Matthew 4, 4. And that can only make you important. So demon boys will be after you. Some humans will be after you. Plus you're going to be surrounded by credence. They won't necessarily be after you. You just have to live with them. And it's really hard to do that. It's enough to make you tear your hair out or want to go grab some buckshot and, and get a shotgun and just go shoot everybody. They're very intolerable, the credence. Very, very intolerable. It's like reading comments in YouTube for a lot of the videos. Present company excluded, of course. I mean, it's just, it's just, people are so sick. It's like listening to Trump supporters. Have you ever noticed Donald Trump supporters? They have no idea what he stands for. They have no idea what his positions are. He just talks the way they like to hear it, so they think he's going to be like Superman and solve all their problems. And there's nothing in his positions that solve any problems. You can well ask what, what politician can. I'm not sure that these problems can be solved. They've been on the books for 60 years. Everything he talks about or that anybody talks about in the election, those were problems 60 years ago. So if they haven't been solved in 60 years, who thinks they're going to be solved now? All right? Oh, rah, rah, this candidate. Rah, rah, that candidate. Oh, if this person's elected, the country will be saved. No. If you learn and live on Bible, the country will be saved. See? That's the other thing you got to recognize about being important. So the first thing is, you're important because God puts the doctrine in you. So he made you important. Number two, the demon boys are going to be after you as a result. Number three, a lot of humans are going to be after you as a result. Pro and con. Number four, you got to live with the cretins and because you got the doctrine, you'll know that they're cretins. And number five, you're the one who can save the world. That's a real, those are five nasty corollaries of this integrated Y business. This is how the integration works. He's the, the same structure you got while you're living down here in your sin nature body is exactly the same structure as will be true in heaven after we're all dead. That's why you are still alive after being saved. You're down here to get training. The only difference between down here and in heaven is there's no sin component in heaven. And in heaven we're all light years higher in our abilities and understandings. But compared to each other and compared to God, there's still all this creation. And most of us, compared to each other then... Will know nothing for eons. And just learn a little bit every day about how to spell Jesus better. Because cretins are cretins. The poor you will always have with you. They're going to stay poor. Happy and poor, and which means poor in understanding. 
and therefore poor in everything else. You'll be rich in understanding if you're a king, and therefore you're rich in everything else, and you own them. So when you walk around, you go to the store, you, you do a bank deposit, you write an email, you open your refrigerator, all those people who, you know, they're working, 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 working. But they're at the bottom, 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 bottom. Every little thing you do because of the doctrine in your head is worth multiple, 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 many times more than what they're doing with their bodies. And that will always be true. So a little bit of you getting doctrine today will do a whole lot for them because a little bit of God's pleasure is of infinite quality, therefore needs an infinite expression, and therefore He spends it on them. For you, because you need them. They're doing the menial jobs. You're doing the big job. To you, it's not that you're doing the big job. It's God doing the big job, and yes, that's true. But he's doing it in your head. And he will do it in their heads, but they don't want it. So now you're being used to save them. And they're being used to save you. That will be true in the eternal state as well. So, honey, as for all intents and purposes, the minute you were saved and started getting with the spiritual life, you entered eternity. You're ruling now. He's having your life have a ruling effect now. And you're on divine television. And you're certainly on the demon television. And occasionally you're on human television. So how do you live? What kind of policies do you adopt? What kind of decisions do you make? They're all important. Talk to him about this. Have him show you the verses. Peace out.